everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're tuning in from Canada, happy Canada Day. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Eva, and on this platform, I talk about all things related to health, wellness, and well being, especially in motherhood. If this sounds like something you're into, and if you want to learn more about it, then keep on watching. The topic of today's video is something that I've been uh, meaning to do for quite a while. I think it's very important, especially in the times that we're living in. What do you even call these times? Crazy, interesting, uncertain, bizarre, I don't know. There's uh, no history books that tell us how to deal with these times that we're living in, for sure. And with everything going on, a lot of us can find ourselves in a moment that may be provoking anxiety. You know, we may be stressing over something that happened, maybe we didn't prepare enough for, for what went on. Um, we may worry about the uncertainty of the future, you know, not knowing what the future kind of holds. And, um, and I think these kind of two worries really invoke a sense of fear and inv invoke a sense of anxiety um, in a lot of people's minds, myself included. Um, I'm not immune to stress. I'm not immune to anxious feelings or thoughts. But that's why I think that right now is more important than ever to learn how to kind of be able to engage with your thoughts and your sensations and your feelings without increasing the anxiety, without catastrophizing the situation, and without being in denial or becoming more overwhelmed than you already are. And the answer, I think, to how we can achieve that feeling of clarity and that feeling of being grounded is mindfulness. It's a pretty straightforward word, right? To be present, to be non-judgmental, to be aware, right? It sounds pretty simple. But the annoying thing is that we as humans have a tendency, our minds have a tendency to go like a thousand miles a minute, right? We have a tendency to over obsess about our feelings or something that happened. We tend to kind of replay things in our heads, becoming overwhelmed maybe, um, and anxious about the uncertainty of the future. And these thoughts tend to make us even more anxious than we already are. They tend to kind of draw us more inward and prevent us from moving forward. So how can you refocus your attention from something that can be potentially negative and damaging to something that is positive and free? Do you ever get those feelings? Like for example, if something unpleasant happens, do you, are you the type to kind of focus a little bit too much on it or, or replay it in your head, um, perhaps feeling a little bit more anxious than necessary? I get that sometimes. I'm always envious of people who are able to kind of brush things off and move forward like nothing ever happened. I've never been able to be the type to uh, to be able to do that. And truthfully, some time back, I considered this a weakness to be, you know, a little bit overly sensitive, overly emotional. And I told myself, I need to learn how to be the type that is able to kind of just brush things off, not worry about anything and just, you know, just move on with my day. But as I've gotten a little bit older, I started realizing that being able to feel and being able to express your emotion and sensitivity, that's actually a really big strength in a lot of aspects of your life. Sure, I may not be able to easily brush things off or become indifferent to uh, certain situations, but it just, it, it doesn't mean that I'm weak. It just simply means that I needed to find a different method of accepting some things without judgment. And that is exactly what mindfulness is. It's the practice of purposely diverting and refocusing your attention so that you can gain a little bit of clarity, be in a present moment, and do so without any judgment. In the past few years, the concept and the practice of mindfulness has done a complete 360. At least that's what I've noticed. Um, it used to be that people thought that mindfulness was only done by people who practiced meditation or who drank matcha tea in the mornings, you know. But today, mindfulness is something that is really heavily researched by the science community. And according to neuroscience research, mindfulness, what it does is it weakens the amygdala in our brain and increases the connection between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. And both of these parts are responsible for allowing us to be less reactive to stressors and to recover better from stress when we do experience it. So there you have it, a real scientific explanation. Pretty darn cool, right? An easier definition for us muggles is uh, that from the American Psychological Association. It goes like this. 
Mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, but not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. From this definition, we can see that mindfulness is something that is a state that can be brought on by practice. It's not something that, you know, it's not the fact that maybe somebody could be born with better mindfulness than, than another person. That's, that's not the case here. It's something that requires practice in order to form it into a habit, in order for it to become habitual. And it does require some sort of a non-judgmental awareness. Non-judgmental, that's the key word. And in a era of social media and an era of never-ending news and in the times that we're living in, however you want to call these times, um, a non-judgmental moment here and there can be, can be a very big relief. So now how can mindfulness benefit us? And before I list off a bunch of amazing things to you, you may ask yourselves, well, Eva, where's the proof? How are you claiming this? Um, well, my friends, I'm going to include all of my sources in the description portion of the video. There are a lot of them because I do do a lot of research uh, when I put this content together. So I encourage you to take a look, um, educate yourselves, uh, do a little bit of more reading into it. It's something that I think in the process of reading, of looking into it, I think that you may find a whole different world of such an interesting um, thing that you can implement into your daily lives. And you'll be amazed at the amazing information available out there to do with mindfulness. But anyway, here are just some of the benefits that mindfulness can have on your life. Higher brain functioning, increased attention and focus, increased immune function, lowered blood pressure, lowered heart rate, increased awareness, increased clarity in thinking and perception, lowered anxiety and stress levels, experience of being calm and internally still, and experience of feeling connected. And two really amazing things that jumped out at me when I was researching the benefits of mindfulness are the following. Mindfulness can assist with um, recovery. So if somebody has uh, recovered from a chronic illness, mindfulness can help them along the way um, to be more at peace and to be um, more positive about the recovery process. And uh, number two is that mindfulness can also be a buffer against bullying and depression. And what I mean by that is that practice of mindfulness can protect children um, from having depressed anxieties and depressed thoughts as a result of being bullied. And it can help on the other end of the spectrum as well. It can improve empathy, social and emotional learning, which can be the key to stopping kids from becoming bullies. This, this reason alone is the reason why mindfulness should be instilled in our children at a very young age. And this is the reason why the importance of mindfulness should be taught in schools. Now, all of this sounds pretty amazing, right? A really easy practice to kind of implement into your daily life, almost like an easy recipe for a healthy mind and a happy soul. But how, how can you implement this? Look, you can certainly develop a whole meditation mindfulness practice, which would involve taking aside some time out of your day, maybe um, creating a little Zen spot um, some somewhere in your house, um, maybe with a comfortable pillow on the floor, you know, where you sit in a neutral posture, focus on your breath and etc. And all that's great. And if you can do that, um, that's wonderful. But not a lot of people can just jump right into um, doing a whole meditation when it comes to being mindful and to practice mindfulness. And at times we can benefit much more from a split second mindfulness uh, other than a few minutes of quiet time. And what I mean by that is that at times when we experience an overflow of emotions and thoughts, we may not necessarily have a couple of minutes at that time to excuse ourselves and find a cozy corner somewhere where we can just collect ourselves, collect our thoughts and have like 10 deep breaths. We may, may not have the opportunity to do that if we're in a moment that requires an immediate reaction. And during those moments, it's critical, the split second reaction to shift your perspective, whether it's a negative or a positive perspective, it's very crucial to learn how to do that in that very moment. And the ability to do that can change your whole entire perspective. So what can you do? What can you do in that very moment to get that little bit of clarity. If you have a split second, you know, you don't want to explode. If you're overwhelmed with emotions, you don't want to explode. But how can you, how can you get that moment of clarity? How can you become a little bit more grounded at that very moment? And the best way to try to understand how you can do that 
is a visualization of what mindfulness is. And when I came across this next analogy that I'm going to explain um, and share with you, I, it just opened my eyes. It, it was like a light bulb went on in my head. I'm a very, very visual person. So um, for me, in order to understand something, sometimes I need to have that image painted in my head, which is actually the reason why um, I've always been so bad at math because I always find it very difficult to visualize a picture in my mind when it comes to solving a math problem. Anyway, I digress. But in order to understand how mindfulness can be beneficial and how we can implement it in that split second reaction, um, this is the following analogy. So Dr. Uh, John Kabat-Zinn, uh, he was one of the first researchers of mindfulness. He explained it this way. He compared mindfulness to being behind a waterfall. So picture this. Waterfall is, take Niagara Falls, for example, can't get any more Canadian than that. Canada Day, Tim Hortons Coffee, Niagara Falls. Um, so the waterfall is your thoughts, emotions, and feelings. And being mindful means that you're not under the water, caught in a swirl of rapid waters of your thoughts and emotions and all that overwhelming stuff. And you're not trying to stop or change them. You can't. They're your thoughts and your emotions and your sensitivities. You just, you have to let them flow. But being mindful is instead of being under that rapid water, you're behind that waterfall, if that makes sense. So you're behind that cascade of water and you're still seeing all of these feelings and you're still kind of, you can even feel them, but you're still seeing all the feelings and all the emotions and all the sensitivities and all the negativities, right? But you're not caught in the middle of it. You're kind of just watching from the sidelines and you're observing everything that's happening, um, evaluating it without any judgment. And that's the key. That's the key to mindfulness is evaluating your um, emotions and your feelings and your sensitivities. You can certainly still see everything that's happening very clearly, but you're not caught in the middle of it all. You're not overwhelmed more than you need to be. And to me, when I first came across this description, across this analogy, I thought that it was beautiful. I thought that it was such a helpful way to visualize it in your head because I think that images, if you visualize something, I think it's, um, in my case at least, it's, it's much easier to remember it and to go back to it whenever you feel the need to do that. So it's such a beautiful image, it's such a helpful thing to keep in mind every time you need that split second of, uh, of mindfulness. To simply think that you're behind the waterfall, that you have this barrier in front of you, that you're still seeing everything that's happening and you're still, you can still react um, just you know, as, as you need to react, but at least you're not caught up in the overwhelmingness of it all. And unlike mindful meditation, which does require you to set aside some time in your day, this right here, you can do at any time. If you're met with an unpleasant situation, if you just need, you know, if you need to react right then and there, this whole image and this whole idea of, um, of that quick split level mindfulness is a very helpful technique to gain a little bit of clarity in that very moment. There are so many amazing benefits when it comes to practicing mindfulness, instilling it in our children, and even in our workplaces to increase job performance. There are so many positive outcomes and the reasons not to practice mindfulness are quickly disappearing. I'll definitely record more content when it comes to this topic just because I think that there's so much more to discuss and I think that there's so much goodness that can come out of it. So there you have it guys. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave me a comment down below. I love getting comments from you. I respond to every single one. It's the highlight of my week and I just, I, I love it. Um, I like reading where you're from. I like reading how my videos resonated with you. Um, I really enjoy it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of my community. Um, I'm wishing you a great day. Happy Canada Day again, if you're from Canada. Um, anyway, I wish you a great day. Uh, be healthy, stay happy, and have fun, and I'll see you in a week. Bye!